This is the Amplify Your Business podcast with Matt J. Hannum, where I have candid conversations with inspiring people and turn topics inside out to help you get amplified in business and in life. Welcome to the show, everyone. It's Matt Hannum here, and I've got a second, oh, you've been the second time around, second mate, time, but I've yeah. got uh, Julian Vanderwall in the studio, in the house today. Our first podcast was a while back uh, last year, and you uh, dialed in from Adelaide, and uh, it's really cool to have you in the space. It's been good, man. Thanks for the invite. No, well, thanks thanks for coming in and, and uh, sparing some time. I know you've got a busy week here in yeah. Perth. and uh, They're working me hard over here. Yeah, I bet, I bet they are, but I bet you're enjoying it and yeah. a bit of, bit of freedom. Probably yeah. no little kids knocking no, you on yeah, the head at uh, 5 a.m. Yeah, so. yeah, it's been a nice sleep, yep. Yeah, that's positive. But uh, yeah, look, thanks for coming back. So obviously you run Spartan Alliance, which is your group of companies um, involved in all things from sales, coaching, finance, HR, like, you know, various different um, aspects, I think all around. And I think it centers on your business mastery, yep. I guess, program and, and work that you do there where you're just trying to help small to medium businesses sort of achieve their goals and outcomes. Yep. So um, yeah, just excited to have you back and love to dig into some sales and to love to dig into a couple of things. I know you've been traveling through Asia and got some other projects, but yeah, um, yeah just really cool to have you here and uh, yeah, welcome back. Thanks, man. Thanks. Oh. It's been good. So yeah, let, let's let's hit sales. Let's hit sales first. And okay. I really, um, you know, I really want to have this conversation because I've, you know, we've talked offline, we've talked a bunch of times uh, how we've got, and I certainly have a, a lot of clients that I have a lot of clients that pay us for marketing and and see a lot of people that are are doing marketing, but sales is just like almost this forgotten space. Like apart, unless you're a you're a Coca Cola and and look, I worked there and just our Perth office had I don't know 50, 60, 70 sales reps um, yeah. in a Perth office. But unless you're like in the auto industry or in somewhat like a really well established business, um, we we just don't do it well, no. and and it's forgotten. I mean, the marketers are a dime a dozen, and I'll I'll put my hand up and say that they're everywhere. But why do we forget sales? I think people are scared of it. To be honest, you know, everyone would like to have leads come in. And it just goes to their email and they can send an email. And straight to their financial to, statement. Yeah, straight to the delivery <laughs> notice, straight to the purchasing order and then send out that and we can do some follow-up post-sale with an email. Yeah. But the face-to-face contact or the phone call is so scary for most people. It's like, oh, what happens if they say no? Well, some in some ways by default, if you don't call them, they're already saying no anyway. So, you, you might as well call them. But we're always scared of what we don't know, right? And that's that's systemic across any business plan. You know, if you don't know how to recruit, chances are you'll be recruiting the wrong person. You'll be spending too much money there. If you don't know how to work on your finance, you'll probably stay poor for a little bit longer than what you'd like. Um, so we're always scared of what we don't know. But from the sales industry, that also goes back even further from, you know, the amount of meetings that I've gone to and let's say two, three hundred people in the seminars. Like, put your hand up if you if you're a salesperson, and there might be three of us. You know what I mean? Yeah, and everyone crazy. else is like, "Oh, I don't want to be a salesperson. I don't want to be classes. I don't, you know, if if you go home to your mum and say, oh, I'm going into sales,' like, oh, God. or you say your grandparents, you know, I'm a salesperson. Like, oh God, not another one, you know. Um, whereas these days, that's that there's still some cultural issues with being called a salesperson. Mm. But if you run a business, you are a salesperson. You are right. I mean, you we know? we all are to an extent. I mean, you know, the old the old line that if you if you're an employee. Then you you have one client and you've had to sell your way to yeah, that one to. client and you have to do the work every yeah. day. Anyone had a relationship? It's no different a relationship, you know I mean? but you know some people sell themselves too short. I mean you've got you've got three little girls, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean you have to sell you have to sell a story constantly on what you want to happen. <laughs> Values, discipline, <laughs> why they can't have the chocolate before dinner. You know, yeah. It's constantly selling. So I mean you know socially we're selling ourselves when you meet people, you go for job interviews. So I think sales is if you get really good at sales, like really 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 good your life changes Mm. i know that sounds crazy but your life will get better if you've ever bought a car and you don't know how to sell or you don't know the sales process you will pay too much for that car Mm. right yeah they're good they're really good that's what they get paid for right yeah if you buy a car just in case you're wondering go on the 31st that's when you buy a car. Yeah, the last day of the yeah. month or financial year. Four o'clock year or on the thirty first, <laughs> yeah. and you that's get a you really good deal, yeah. right? You get the best deal. You go there on the first, and they don't need you so much for that day. Yeah. But they're trying to hit. Everyone's trying to hit numbers. But they do, right? And we don't even necessarily begrudge it in that process because you're excited about a new car. But then they move you to the between the departments, and 
hey, have you thought about this and yeah. this coding and then, then do this and that? And-, and most of them are pretty bad. The upsell on the, the you know, scotch guarding the, yeah. or the leather cover or the paint thing. <laughs> like I literally, what ceramic coating, yeah. you know, we, we just bought a new car because we've got three kids under four. So, you have to buy a new car for that. That's a good question. Uh, I should ask you that. I, I don't know what to do. I'm about to have a third and I'm like, what, you what, need a what, car. what car do I need? To, what am I <laughs> going to need? A tank, to, a, a tank to fit this thing? Like, yeah, the H2. <laughs> for, for like, as long as I can remember, all I've ever said to my wife, Tash, is that where I'm never driving a minivan. <laughs> and I said, I'm never driving a minivan. And now, like, I'm staring down the face of either, like, maybe a Land Cruiser, but I don't even think that you can. I mean, how do I get six, three nine. kids in, in Mazda three? Mazda 6 9. Yeah, Mazda there's literally, 6 9? Yeah, there's about four or five cars that can fit three baby seats in the back. That's it. Yeah. Mazda 6 9. <laughs> but so that, 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 now that we've, you know, crossed off the important questions, <laughs> yeah, that's right. um, I'm glad that uh, we had to get you to travel to Perth for that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, like, but we do. I, what I what I find really interesting and fascinating around that sort of in the mindset is that so many of us as companies, like either through our product or our service, we're trying to we want to help people, but we're afraid to communicate with them and especially on that that front end and decipher whether or not we can even help them. And you know why? You know how how and when do you think this dirty word of sales is going to change? Um, and how do you how do you sort of approach that when you're trying to help people? And because really you're just when you're out there helping someone with their sales process, you're trying to help them achieve their business goals anyway, right? Yeah. I mean that's what you're doing. For the most part, we I mean we spoke a little bit before the the podcast in the sense that most business owners are not even problem aware of their sales process. But yeah. if you literally if you if you're in sales. Uh, if you're in sorry, if you're in business, even a hairdressing salon, and you don't literally have a documented sales process, you are losing money from every customer that walks in the door, mm. right? So by not having that sales process, and I'm not talking about one that old oh, mate is just got a great personality. That's not a process. That's a personality. Yeah. I can't teach Matt Hannum's personality. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can teach the skills and the systems and the structure behind it, and use my own flair and characteristics and personality but i can't teach your personality mm. yeah so and that's what a lot of small business owners have right well I they're mean, hoping they have that a, someone has a good personality to sell their product well even themselves i mean let's face it because many will just sell themselves as the owner like let's call it a you know a partnership that's running a, a hair salon or you know the mechanic that's got a small shop yeah. i mean basically they're getting referrals based off their personality yeah and sometimes their title yeah. So if you're especially hairdressing, oh, I'm the owner. Oh, I want to see, I want to see Mary because she's the owner. So I feel special because she's got her time as the owner. But unfortunately, you as Mary as the owner is unscalable in four shops. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Mary can't do haircuts at one o'clock in four shops. <laughs> and I've seen people struggle with this, mm. um, whether that they've been the flagship of their their business for fifteen odd years and. They just can't scale that out because yeah. they can't provide to anyone else what they've done. Yeah. And they can't even pass off a 10-year veteran client, even no. to someone they trust. And they've, they've, that client's known for five years. They still can't – they can't yeah. not be the owner. And even they, if they've the owner's 75 years old, they still want to only talk to them, you know. Yeah. They're, they're trying to remove themselves. It's like, oh, maybe this relationship – but you've been with us for 20 years, mm-hmm. you know. You, but that's but with humans, you know, and that's where the difference between forming relationships and rapport with customers and having that, you know, following pre online following, actually yeah. following the people. Um, there would be a reason why you would go to a coffee shop. It's not just a product. Mm. It's the barista, and on Wednesdays when Jack's in there, you know that your coffee is going to be good. He remembers your name. You don't need to, you know, what I mean, like bang. Matt gets a latte, flat white, two sugars, just bang straight up. They're the best, eh? Hey? Yeah. Like when 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 someone knows you and like the experience of buying a coffee, for example, is is huge. Yeah, um, yeah. I and uh, that's that's the difference. And but that's not scalable in to an extent. Like you know, but it should be a process. Yeah, but if you, you could process it, so yeah, like to use Starbucks as an example, they've they've built a process around. You know, obviously can't be the same as every time. Julian walks in, hey, here's your coffee order. I know you. It's good to see you on this Wednesday yeah. morning. But they can do, they can make you feel special in yeah. a way. At when least you get your name called out, everyone loves their own name. Yeah. Right? Julian, oh, that's me. Yeah. How did you know? Oh, yeah, I told you. But you know, I told you yeah. that at the counter. But even when they call it out, you, there's a little bit of a, oh, you know what I mean? So that, that that is definitely a process that everyone should have or can have. Yeah. So 
largely it feels to me like it's and we've talked about I've talked about this a little bit I think in Simple Minds podcast um and other things recently but we have a it, it, I think to me if I was to d- dissect it in very broad layman sort of terms we have this fear of success and I think that's part of the reason that sits behind us not wanting to get out there and and sell ourselves because we're worried of what that might look like if we were actually actually to truly succeed. Yeah, I mean, I've never that one. I've never understood that one until I've gone into different ventures and I almost thought to myself, maybe maybe that's me too. You know, in, in some way, you know, because I've never understood that when I was in early in my business career. You know, mm. ten years ago, oh, I said, you know, scared of failure. I get that. That's pretty simple to understand. Scared of success, like I don't, I don't get that. And then as you go embark on big adventures or ventures that are so far outside your comfort zone that you need to grow so much further for that venture, mm. um, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe there is a part of that. You know what I mean as you go into further in self discovery and self reflection and more self awareness and and hmm, maybe maybe I do have a part of that. Maybe that's in all of us in some way. You know, maybe. I don't know what I would do. Maybe I can't manage a group of 20 or 40 people and maybe I can't manage 14 companies around the, you know what I mean? So we actually get caught up in the maximum growth potential and we've only got one shop, mm. right? What if we do go nationally? How am I going to manage 14 locations? Like, dude, you got six people in one. Just Let's just work on one and then two, right? Because mm. before going from a sole tradership to a sole trader to a to to a, a bigger business of two or three people, you probably didn't think that you could do that at high school either. No, right? exactly right. So, and I think we hide in the perceived like perfection where we I don't know, no one can do it, you know, to, as well as I can. Great time. way to not scale. Yeah, yeah. great <laughs> way to not scale. But it's it's great way so to stay common, doing right? everything yourself. Yeah. You know. Because so, you don't have a business, you you genuinely you just have a job with some helpers. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and that you know doesn't mean there's anything wrong with that, but it's like, what is your real goal there? And yeah. uh, I think we 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 sort of set these big targets and goals sometimes, but don't necessarily want to do the work that's actually going to get us there. Yeah. But if the, if there's some more of uh you know, they can't do it as well as I can. There's a bit of ego in there that you kind of in some way unintentionally don't want someone to do it as good as what you do because mm. now you're not needed. Yep. You know, the new company you're talking in digital signage, the new company that we're setting up, I'm kind of in some way outside of booking meetings and closing deals, I'm not actually needed. Mm. And I'm and it's kind of as it grows, we've got business development in, uh, managers, sorry, business BDMs, we've got sales executives, we've got the install team. When you get big enough, we're going to have the logistics manager to look after delivery and logistics of everything nationwide. And apart from generating more deals, I don't, I won't be doing that stuff. Mm. I still need a job because I will get bored, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Unless we get a, a, a chain and we have to book in 800 stores in 20 countries, then I'll be flying around to the 20 countries. But outside of that, I'm, I'm redundant on my own business that we're setting up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, that's a good place to be. And I think well, that's I, what they I reckon, think, but I still need a job. You still, well, you do need you know? a job, but you don't, well, you don't need a job. For me, um, I do. <laughs> you need something I, to do. You need, yeah. you need a project. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For sure. Exactly. And I, I understand that. We always need something to do. But um, yeah, I think people are often, yeah, and I think that's probably part of it as well. I mean, like the risk adverse sort of approach can come into it. Like, it's like, why would I take that risk? I'm happy doing this work. Yeah. I don't really want to, you know, I don't really want to sell much more. You know, I think is is the truth that people are um, potentially saying mm. to themselves sometimes. I think yeah. we often- Is that true though? Well, I think people do it. Um, I know that's what they say. Yeah. I, I, know, I know they say that and I know- I, I don't really want any more money. Really? No, no, no. Sorry. I don't think they say that. I say that they don't really want the extra work that comes with it. Oh. They, they're they sitting in a comfort zone yeah, yeah, type yeah. arrangement that they're like, hey, we want to grow 50%, but they don't really. Mm. Like they actually don't want to do the work that's required yeah, that's to, right. to get the growth. They would yeah. love some more money harvested off the top, but actually they're yeah. kind of comfortable. Yeah, that's um, right. Even if they're not necessarily doing very well, they're comfortable in that, yeah. in that space. If they're doing well, I understand. If they're not doing well, there's some BS oh, there's, in there. There's definitely some yeah, emotional some or there. um, there's a limiting something you know, exactly. going on for sure. Yeah. But in saying that, I was watching that show Succession. I don't know if you've seen that one. No, I haven't. Basically, it's a, a 
mega, mega media family running a multi-billion dollar company. Um, I like it. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I think it's like billions, but it's a little bit different. I haven't seen billions. But the shit they go through yeah. to have that money, I was like, they're getting sued. There's this, there's blah, blah, blah. There's PR, bad PR of something. Someone's trying to get them. It was like, oh, I, I don't think... I don't think that's good. I don't think I would want to have all that cash and still deal with all that rubbish, you know. There's no top, you know, they're away on their holiday home with all their family, but they're dealing with a major meltdown of something, you know, one of the companies be is it yeah, maybe maybe not that much. Well, I think your problems just get bigger, right? And I think the challenge with that is whether you can handle it. Yeah, and that's I think right. that's that's where we will often sit on the spectrum of what we can handle. I think which is why sales are just so yeah, so not 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 the forgotten art, but it's pretty you know, close to as, it. As as a word of <laughs> like, it, we we can often start a business as long as it's a you know it's a similar business to others in an industry. You can sort of get your own piece unless mm. something goes horribly wrong and mm. major disruption comes through. Yeah, well, and if I you think look at, that's what we do. If you look at your business plan in today's twenty nineteen, if mm. you did a business plan, what level is your sales process on that plan? Like the color of your walls in your office is up from your sales process. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the chairs first. you're buying, for the, you know what I mean? Let me just get a hundred grand out to fit out my office first. And then, what and then we'll sit there we and wonder the- why, uh, why no one's bought exactly. anything yet. But my sound, sign looks amazing, yeah. right? My logo looks sick. So yeah. we've been through ten rounds of revision for logos, but uh, exactly, but we haven't sold a product. Exactly, and look, that's I feel like that's changing. Um, in that, I think we've got this. You know, obviously we're moving to this gig economy a little bit, and we've got a lot more freelancers and that working out there, and a lot, lot less requirement awesome. to have physical spaces. Yeah, um, which I think is amazing. Yeah, um, I think, well, I think the modern business world is definitely changing. Yeah. I.e., location in twenty years' time won't be a priority. You know, because literally everything's on the cloud, everything's online, or yeah. we can chat. We can, you know, we did a podcast in a different state. We could have been all anywhere in the world mm. and done exactly the same thing. But it is nice to see each other. It's a different feeling that you get oh, face yeah. to face, definitely. Yeah. Um, so that that modern business world, we you know, for for a little hairdresser, we don't own local businesses anymore. If you have a website, you are now a global business. Mm. You might not be able to be seen. Visible, you need these guys, right? But you are now a global business. It's really true. And I think people really do struggle to get their head around that concept of, you know, their Facebook page, their website, it is global. And it's like, okay, so let's say maybe you're in a in a small market. Let's say you're in a regional town. Well, there is still a way where you could craft yourself an online presence and, and you know, create some other products in that world. Mm-hmm. Which allows you to say survive in it. Let's say you're in a ten thousand person town, you know, like a tiny little town, and there's five five salons, right? Yep. What are you going to do? Well, everyone else can race each other to the bottom, or you could make That's some exactly, great content. Yeah. I love that. And phrase. you could you could craft a couple of online products or an online school or something something yep. you could do. I don't know, whatever yep. it is. Um, it, it's, race it, each other to it's the out bottom. There. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, it's undercut each other so much that none of us are making money. But we're all global. We're all on the internet. You know, if you've got access to an FPOS machine, you're you know, you're running through a phone line or the internet somehow. Don't need that. I got um, half to pay. Yeah, you can got after pay, you can do whatever you like. But if you've got a phone, then you can do it. So what is a and we've used the salon example heaps, but what if what if I'm a um what if I'm a tradie? Like if I'm a if I'm a tradie and um I've maybe got a couple of guys and often I'm busy and sometimes I'm really struggling, like how do I how do I get better at sales and how do I you know, how do I focus on that and make it a heart of my business and sort of use it to take away my problems? Yeah. So, f- biggest thing about sales is understanding what your customers' needs are. Needs, fears, doubts, concerns, beliefs. What is it? What is the problem they're actually fixing? You know, if you're a plumber, you're not just fixing the toilet. Yeah. Right. You're fixing the ability to not have Everywhere. A mess. <laughs> yeah. right. You can swear on here. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to be crude. You know? um, so you, you're not actually just fixing the toilet. You're yeah. making like, I wouldn't know how to do that. You mean? If my roof is collapsing and there's a hole in the hole in the ceiling, there's water coming through, the roof, the roofing guy, I don't know what it's called, the roofer, right? He doesn't just fix my roof. He makes sure that I don't get electrocuted 
or my whole power goes out because the water goes into my downlights. Like mm. he's not just fixing a problem, he's saving my life potentially and not having further problems happen, right? So whereas most people just, you know, oh, I'm just in, I'm just a baker. Well, you're providing a loaf of bread that people are going to enjoy that they can have avocado and bacon and some poached eggs and, you know, some dukkha on top and some beautiful olive oil. Mm, sounds and- good. Hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know we were doing a cooking show. <laughs> you know, so you're actually every product that a business has. So if, if the vision that you have is just making hot cross buns, you're providing an experience that people can come as a family and enjoy Easter together, mm. right? So someone actually said, oh, I'm just, I just sell houses. How do I get inspired about selling houses? You're providing potentially a family's home for the rest of their life. That's a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah. You know, they got, the person that just sold me the, 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 the CX-9 didn't provide me with a car. You provided me with a safe vehicle that my whole family can enjoy and sleep in, thank God. <laughs> and I get to listen to ABC Kids yeah. all day. Get to listen right? to ABC podcast. <laughs> and watch uh, Bluey. That's true. <laughs> I just, uh, anyway, we'll move on. I love traveling. Um, so, so, you know, every product that a business owner has or does, if you think of it as a bigger than just a product and, it, it, and the experience that that product gives people, your product will probably be different to you. Hmm. Therefore, so you the sales process a, is easy. So you can attach a different, you know, attach more than just the monetary sort of value yeah. on, on what you're doing. Someone didn't pay 500 grand for a house. They paid half a million dollars for a home that's invested that becomes the kids' bedrooms and the toys and the, and the Christmases they have and the, and the birthdays they have and, and the scars they have from the trampoline. You know, that, that's hmm. what that home provided for them. They provide it with a safe house that they can come home from school and, and work and come home and then bring their family back to them. And when they have kids, potentially not so much in these days, but, you know, when your grandparents had the same house for 45 years, right, that's, that's what that half a million dollars did. Mm. It didn't just give them a roof over their head. Anywhere can do that. A hotel can do that. So it's so much bigger than what people are thinking. But if you, and if you sell, quote, unquote, in that way, or more importantly, get people to buy in that way from you. That like sales still don't right. I mean, like we, it- we help a lot of um, you know, people in the building construction industry, and and in so many ways, the content that gets put out is n- not really tailored around what it can provide for your family in a home. Mm. Like it really isn't. It's more around pricing, and here's here's the extra Three bits and bedrooms, pieces, and this many, bathroom. this many, this. It doesn't like we as much as we often try and get a lot more lifestyle and and family and and some, some of those benefits that you talk about in there. Um, typically, the market just wants to push, you know, just wants to push those features. Like they yeah. don't they don't want to do anything else. They want to push price and features and and leave it there. But there's just so much opportunity to to sell a different story. And yeah. and you're right, like especially the home. You know, we're in Australia. This is the, you know, this is the place we have the Australian dream. Everyone wants their home. It's been crafted that way. Yeah. So we buy up all our own property. Yeah. And I think I think the banks crafted that. Yeah, dream. well, I think it's been crafted very well. <laughs> the four biggest banks are the um, controlling the CBA ad. <laughs> the, well, the irony is that we all own the banks through the shares and we own our own properties and mortgage them to ourselves. The dividends and, aren't paying me that much. And well, no, they're not, but we're, someone's getting paid and we're, we're so wealthy off the back of basically the – yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's a guy, Emil Jurisic or something, he's on he's all over Facebook. He's selling an $8.8 million house. I think it's in Ascot up in Brisbane or something like that. And he's giving away – or the developer's giving away a, a free uh, Lamborghini. Mm. Now, that $8.8 million of the free Lamborghini or – Eight point eight million dollar land beginning with a free house, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, the person that buys that, it's an incredible house. Like if you check it, check it out, it's, it's incredible. Um, the person that buys that now with all the media around it is not buying the house. They are buying the status of what that media did, and I bought that house that everyone saw, millions of people saw in the country. Mm. That's who's buying that house. It's like over here we do like the um, 
the telephone home, for example, and you know, where someone who buys that auction, this home that's been crafted by all these different people that have donated bits and pieces all the way through, and it all goes to charity. I mean, they're paying way over. You know, they're paying way over the market price typically for these types of things. But yeah. it's it's they're buying a story far exactly. more than the you know than just just the product or just the yeah. the outcome that they're looking to achieve. And I think we just don't talk to that enough. In our marketing, but then at the at the sales level as well is the same thing. And I think uh, what I do see is there's not enough rapport being built to even get into those those conversations. No, nah, the, but the business owner is not setting up a cafe to give me my coffee that's going to make me feel good and perform well for the morning. And the connection that I get with Jack down down the shop and. He remembers my name and like that's not what the business owner thought he was getting into, but that's what you're into, Mm. right? When I get my nice ham cheese toasted sandwich and it's buttered on both sides and it's beautiful and delicious and warm and- Uh, You must be hungry. Yeah. Uh. (laughs) So, (laughs) chef by trade, so it's easy for me, right? So, so he didn't sell me the sandwich and the coffee. Mm. Yes, he did, but he sold me a bit of energy. He sold me like- a bit of comfort in the morning. He 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 set up my day properly that I can actually perform my day. That's what he sold me. And for ten bucks, twelve bucks, I think it's a pretty good deal. It's so true. I mean, look, we're, we're, we're sipping away at a couple yeah. of coffees now, and as much as I I think I enjoy a bit of caffeine and that, for me, it's not about like the liquid that's being drunk in this thing. It's just the habit of With three kids. I promise and, you. Well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, but it's stimulant in it. You do you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't complain. A bit of caffeine's good, but often I'm not going for it for the caffeine. I'm going for the comfort of the, you know, the experience, social. exercise, going for yeah. the quick social walk outside, the, fresh the eight air. to ten minute gap from yeah. from meetings. It's um, Absolutely. it's these different Clears things that head, we do it for. Bit of fresh air. Yeah, I feel like yeah. a coffee. It's like, mm, do you really need it? Uh, that's I think that's my third coffee. I don't normally only drink one. Yeah. But I was like, that's third. Yeah. I'm gonna have a coffee. You yeah. know I mean? So it's um yeah, I, I really don't think people even the salespeople don't understand really what they're selling. Mm. And if they understand it intrinsically and had that extra vision of the post sale, let's say, and the cause and effect of that sale, yep. I think the sales process would be so much easier. How how do they get there? Like how do they how do they learn this? How do they start to reposition? I guess I'll their put conversations. My website link in the middle. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, that's over. like uh, like let's say I'm that busy tradie, and and the reason I why I use them, and there's many like them, but there, there's there's this feast or famine like approach which they always get stuck in. Um, Especially construction. Especially construction. They, One they minute they're so the busy that they're not even answering their phone. The next yeah. minute they're like, we've got nothing. Yeah. And and so they've got this real challenge around like if you set, okay, here's a here's a follow-up regime, here's other things. Like they would they would be very challenged by that because one minute they're working from seven till nine, um, you know, seven days a week, and the next minute they're standing there with nothing to do, hoping the phone rings. How do they how do they craft uh, you know, or how how do they try and even out their pipe, so to speak, by by using this like some sales techniques? Well, first of all, spend an hour. Just 60 minutes in your business, you know. If you don't have an hour in your business, you need to spend an hour on your business, right? To find the hour in the business. Yeah, there are, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a good reason Check why you don't in. have that. Yeah, <laughs> find the hour, right? And then you'll find some more. So, so work out what makes it go up and what makes it go down. Mm. Is it seasonal? Is it, you know, construction? Is that feast of famine where I've got so many projects and then I've got nothing? Well, how did you get those projects? You probably were working on a few months and had a few leads coming in and then you close the deal and then you're like, oh my God, I closed them all at once. And then you f- were doing all the work and then you had to get more leads again. Yeah. Right? So, just s- a bit more structure in the week. You know, if you're on site construction, perf- like I said, perfect example. If you're on site, spend an hour a week out of your week somehow. Oh, there's plenty of times driving and you just call a few businesses to slowly drip feed some more stuff coming in yeah because you don't want to be working from seven to 11 for four months straight and then be not working for two months i mean no. that everyone Even talks about life balance that's, like yeah that's not a balance that's that's crazy mm. it'd be much easier to go from eight till six five days a week or yeah and just right? what, build a habit you know make those five to seven calls when you're in the car driving yeah. or Whatever it looks or like. connecting with people. Okay, you know, you finish a job. Oh, who else do you think would be, or halfway through the job, even better if it's a two, three-week job mm-hmm. at the start of the job. Oh, fantastic. Well, we didn't finish this. Do you know anyone else? It's, just ask. 
And mm-hmm. is a lot of this stuff just systems, you think? Like, is that what you would it's just, just build in little habits? Like, yeah, it's just, like we're it's, all full of habits. Yeah. You know, when you go in, into a dark room, what do you do? Mm. Turn the light on. Like, it's, you don't think about it. It's a habit, right? When you wake up in the morning, first thing you do, probably these days, check your phone. It's, well, that's probably what most people do. Yeah. It's a habit, you know? So, brush your teeth. The way you, the way you dry yourself after a shower, it will be exactly the same every single day. Mm. So I see a lot of people with underperforming sales teams or salespeople, and and sometimes there's market, you know, market factors there. But let's just forget the market factors that might be there. Why, you know, there there's a lot of I see a lot of entitlement, and I see a lot of poor activity in in the approach. Like, what would you do? Or what would you say to, to someone that has a, let's say, a three or five person sales team or even just one person who just doesn't seem to be getting it done? Um, they've got okay lead flow, you know, let, let's just call all things else equal. Mm-hmm. How, do you, how do you inspire them and how do you get them to take it to another level to help you in your business? Well, if you're the business owner and you're in that type of space, I hope that you somehow can do something in the sales process. If not, you will need help. It's that simple, right? Yeah. Um, secondary to that is industries change, regulations change, businesses die, but the industry is still there. So, you know, uh, when GST came in, some businesses goes, oh, can't do it. And they actually quit before GST came in. Yeah. Right? You didn't even try. You just thought, oh, 10%, oh, like, I can't do this. But I don't know, there's probably more businesses now that are running with GSC than there was previously. Um, obviously, there's more cap, you know, per capita is still, you know. Yeah, so, but, but if you need to have a sales process, that really helps because then it doesn't change from person to person, you know. And if Johnny comes in and Matthew comes in and Sam comes in and, you know, Michelle comes in, there's a documented sales process that or a sales program and anyone that's, let's say, in residential sales, i.e. For, for, you know, display homes or, or whatever, solar panels, anything that you have three or four people on the road doing sales, mm. there has to be docu. Otherwise, you're just hoping that the personality matches your clientele. Yeah. So, if I've got three or four people on the road, I've got some documentation, but it's not really quite being followed, do I, do I need to roll through an attrition sort of process or can I can I reboot the team? Like and have you have you sort of successfully been able to do that? Because one thing I sort of come across is a real frustration from business owners, but they've got some core people that have been around for a long time. And and why it's so difficult is that these people have produced a lot for them over time, but they haven't necessarily moved and and, and changed with techniques. And I, I'm going to ask you the question about where we're going forward with sales in a minute. But mm-hmm. um, what can, can you reboot a team or a, a couple of team members like that? Or do you need to, do you need to let one go to help re, reshuffle the team? I know that's probably a real general question, but yeah. is, it, is it possible? And how do you yeah. find, like, where do you find the motivations? Because if they're already a commission driven, you know, I mean, I assume a base and phones and cars and things often are in play, but let's just say they've already got a commission space where they, if they do more, they'll make more. Yeah. So they've already I love got- that when people come, oh, how do I make more money? Yeah. Do one more sale and I'll pay you X. Yeah. <laughs> do do two one more sale. I'll pay you two X. <laughs> so how, like if they've already got that opportunity in front of them and yeah. they've had it forever, but they're in a comfort zone of sorts and they're not pushing mm-hmm. themselves, how do you get a team to perform? Yeah. So culture is is not necessarily about having fun, yeah. and that's where especially a lot of younger the young you know millennials and the, they want to have fun in the company. They want to they want to have beers in front of that. They want to have a ping pong table, which is great. But fun is not culture. Performance is called high performance is culture. Yeah. So how do you create a high performing team and high uh, with that has that that culture space? As an as a company owner, you coming in hot and heavy will probably be a good way to lose the longer serving people yeah. because you're right. They've been there, the company, for, especially an established company. You know, the, the guys, I was dealing with someone from, from a printing place and, and the guy had literally been there for 18 years. <laughs> yeah. And actually, that's common. Look, I'm telling that I see that a lot, right? I was actually talking to a projector company, um, state manager, and she'd been there for 23. Wow. Now, 
for her to change current processes mm. is virtually impossible, but we can improve them. As the company owner, if you've got someone there for 23, 23 years, you potentially will need another voice to come in to fix any problems because if you're the company owner, right, we're coming. It's like, this is, what the hell? What are you talking about, Julian? Like, mate, I've been here for 23 years. I was there when you started the company and now you want to, this, this is just so incongruent to what we've just done. Mm. So you're going to get a lot of backlash potential backlash you need to have even if they're somewhat willing right i mean even if they sort of want to be part of some change and some growth i think uh, changing you know a quarter of a century worth of habits is hard work like you know we we, we struggle to do those things in our personal life um so how do you you know how do they do that in 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 their business i can't even get some people would turn the light off at home, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we'll just be able to automate it soon, basically. We'll just do it with your phone. I need everything on a PIR. Yeah. <laughs> no movement for 10 minutes off, right? <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes you need to work around. So, step, yeah. aside, step up or step aside. Yeah. Sometimes work around um, that person, but you still need to make sure that person is included. Mm. The other thing you can do is actually start to work on what their goals are personally, professionally, and financially, mm. and then you're going to get more buy-in. So, I've got something called the circle of self-actualization, which is kind of like the wheel of life on steroids. Okay. Um, so, the wheel of life has, you know, health, wealth, family, friends, relationships. Mine's got 15 different sections. So, to really chunk into your purpose in life, how you feel, spirituality, creativity, all those sort of things that can actually really help manage where your life is at right now. And you're right, that comfortability, 25, 23 years later on $90,000, whatever it is, plus some comms, car, phone, is very, very comfortable. It's a tough space. Yeah. Because like, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, – these are, these are very common. There's a 50-year-old. Yep. Absolutely. Let's say they've ma- they've managed to move their base up to 70, 80, 90. Yeah. Um, they've probably got a good 10, 15 years into their mortgage and they've so they've bought at a time where it wasn't high. Yeah. They've had kids then. They've ha- they've sort of hustled their way 15 years through busy markets and let's face it if you're most of Australia has been pretty solid busy market for the last say 15 years and their base and their outgoings at home, their outgoings are probably reducing because their kids are getting a little bit older yeah. and the kids are starting to do their own Mortgages thing. coming down. They, but they, they get a car, the phone, their paid. base is high. Yeah. And sure, they've got a commission incentive, but they just don't need it. Well, that one is my, you know, Peter yeah. is, there's not much I can do with Peter. Yeah. So, okay. if I'm trying to get maximum performance out of Peter and I want to get him from 90 to 150,000, but now he has to work an extra two, three hours a day, mm. Peter will probably not do that. Yeah. Right? Unless you talk to his caravan that he wants to buy or something. Yeah. Or it, fi- it, find something, exactly. right? Exactly. Or yeah. say, look, Peter, you're 55 years old now. How about we do this for another seven years? We will do another 40, 50, 60,000 dollars a year for seven years. That's, you know, a couple of hundred grand, put that into your super and set yourself up and that and that's it. Maybe yeah. that'll inspire him. Or maybe if you do this for an extra four or five years, you can retire five years early. That might inspire him to not work. But you know what? He probably wants to get out of the house. How many Uber drivers do you see or taxi drivers do you see a 60-year-old that they've retired? They're just doing that a couple of days a week just to get out of the house. A lot, hey. I yeah. definitely see a lot. And I it can makes understand sense. That. You know, I can understand why, you know, you often jump into a pretty nice car and, and they're just, yeah, they're just doing the yeah. day trip where they're just cruising around to the airports yeah. and they won't work at night. And I, yeah, probably, I mean, mostly I'll Uber around during business hours yeah. um, when I'm just jumping in and out of a certain hundred meetings. A couple bucks a week. I literally caught one here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's pretty the amazing. Guy was, the guy was, yeah. And you know that he doesn't really want to have a boss. No. And that's okay. Yeah. Do you mean so? So for Peter, maybe I can inspire him to do a little bit more. But he gets his four weeks off. You know, he goes on his cruise. Um, yeah. You know, twice a year. Um, he's got a very like he might he might have the mortgage already paid off. He's got a couple hundred grand in super, maybe. Yeah. And he do, kind of does not need to do more to have more because he doesn't need more. Does it make sense? But you can't have four Peters, can you? Uh, yeah, if you do, you need some you need some young blood in there. Yeah, you know, but you got to make sure that the old boys culturally don't undermine the new wave yeah. that you want to kick, kick into it. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's what that's, I mean. I mean, not not talking age necessarily, but just like that that mindset. Because I I also see that mindset in a lot of younger people as well. Mm. Um, that similar kind of mindset that we're talking about. That Peter, like very like an entitled sort of mindset. And just sorry not thinking that they Peter. have to work hard. Yeah, sorry, Peter. Huh? <laughs> Peter, you've just been made redundant. 
<laughs> um, sorry, mate. Um, but uh, yeah, like I, I do see that mindset even through younger younger people, and I, I, find, I think that's dangerous for yeah, them. Very, um, especially when you're young. Especially you got that young. Heaps of energy. You got know? a long, long, long way to go in your career and what what you need to achieve yep. like, to 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 survive. You know, yep. if anything else. Um, but the, the, that culture, you're right. Like I, I often see attempts at change and, hey, we're going to do this and you guys have to jump on LinkedIn and do this and that, all these yeah. other. And, and they they struggle and then then you'll you bring one or two useful members, you know, useful in, in mindset strategy yeah. uh, more than anything else. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah. um, and then there's just a massive – Civil war that yeah, goes yeah, on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you've got the north and the south, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like just this huge civil war. Around. North of the middle age and the south of the middle age. <laughs> and, and all, for all it does is cost the business. Yeah, you know, yeah. because so you, there's you, a lot of experience in the old guys and a lot of like contacts and knowledge and all mm-hmm. this, but they, they just they both sides resist the fusion. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and in some ways, especially in the sales, let's say I've just got off the top of my head, um, you know, printers they normally have very old school people and the the young it's mainly run by the old school yeah. you know they're the old boys they're the ones that have got clients they know every business they've been in you know Fremantle their whole life they know every street they know every business owner they've been there when the when the new business the new uh, commercial building with residential towers on top and the retail down below that was an industrial area yeah. 35 years ago and they remember Johnny that had that factory do you know what I mean actually they worked in that factory yeah. do you know what I mean so so you're going to have those people um, but you need to make sure that everyone is on the plan on the same mission mm-hmm. you mean so if the vision necessarily like changes and you go right we're, we're doing well, but all of a sudden our competitors are getting a little bit more closer to us. They're taking more market share. Our sales have dropped back a little bit. We're getting a little bit too comfortable. But, you know, comfortability is a great way to start going out of business, mm. right? True. And, and the worst thing about success, it's a very dangerous place mm. because it's a great way to stop doing what you did to get there, yeah? And, and my such favorite quote, yeah, such a trap, you know, good times cause bad policies, I say, mm. because when things are good, you don't need to be great. You don't need to have your policies to the T, yep. right? It can be very wishy-washy and uh, we can get away with it, you know. It breeds bad habits, eh? Hey? So what, what was this quote? What's your favorite quote? Good times cause bad policies. Good times. Oh, that's a quote. Yeah. Where does so that come from? Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. But it, it is it. so true uh, because you just start to shave off. Oh, we don't have to. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, it's all it's good. It's okay. Yeah, we're oh, doing oh, fine. You know, and one of the... You know, the thing that just popped to mind is like finances actually is where you start to make some silly choices. Like, yeah, yeah. oh, we're doing really well. Don't chase that client for that money. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, like, exactly. oh, oh hang on. Right. Oh, they're at 60 days. Oh, yeah. no, nah, it's okay. We're yeah. doing well. And, and then, then all of a sudden then your, you lose your that account money. goes 120 and it's like, oh, bad debt now. Yeah. It's like, that wasn't smart. You and know we do mean? silly things, right? Yeah. We do silly things with, with success more so than with, you know, I think sometimes we use the struggle to to force ourselves on and, and oh, to when get back against done. the wall. Trust me, I, yeah. I swing hard. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I, look, I've, I've, I I've swing. had my fair share of <laughs> fair share of um, <laughs> difficult spots, and um, absolutely, yeah, yeah, you know, a lot, a lot harder than than when things are oh, okay. Definitely, definitely. And yeah. when I connect, it's it's like it's a KO, right? <laughs> but. Also, it's a very stressful time, so you can't constantly put yourself under that much stress yeah. all the time because it's, I don't think that's very healthy. No, that's a that's a solid point. You and know? I think if I'm being truthful, in my past, I've used I've used that to fuel me at times. I've probably allowed things to get to a tough spots to then like to to find another level within of yourself to work growth. to work later to long yeah. like to do these things in a. I realize that that's not, there's no self love in that. And there's no, you know, you're not looking after yourself and you can't use, um, you know, you can't use adrenaline to actually run 24 yeah. seven. Like it you doesn't can. work that way. <laughs> For about four or five months. Yeah. Yeah. That's obvious. And then yeah. you need about two months off, you know, yeah, at least. Yeah. And yeah. if you haven't built it in those, you're, you're in trouble. Yeah. Right. But with three kids or, you know, yeah. one on the way, congratulations. One yeah, more. Thank you. Uh, yeah. With three kids, you, you don't, you don't have that thing. Things change, you know? So it's um, y- your mindset changes. You're, you're tired. Right. Um, so you don't have that like raw energy is what you used to have. Pre-kids and, and being a bachelor was easy. 
I mean, it, it, isn't it funny? You look back and you're like, wow, I had more time than I knew. Oh, man. <laughs> like, how easy oh, was if it? I only knew. Yeah, I know, right? It's, it's uh, yeah, but I mean, you, you only know what you can know at that, yeah. at that time. It takes 21 years to become 21. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't think I look back and, and look at when I was younger and I wasn't trying. Mm. I definitely was trying pretty hard back then mm. and, and working my, my, my butt off. But yeah, it was, it was a lot easier. That's mm. for sure. You know, yeah, you just your sleep that you don't get. And that, when that third one, I remember when the third one was born, not to scare you. I remember the, f- or oh, even when the second one, actually, the first three months, by the end of that 12 weeks, I literally couldn't even speak, which is really not good in sales. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, sure And if you're not. running a sales business it's, yeah. and you're trying to do meetings and coaching, and I literally couldn't, I oh, it's just shattered, mm. you know. It's shattered. tough. And um, I'm obviously um, a little bit nervous of what's coming up. Yeah. Our second one wasn't a great sleeper and yep. wasn't for almost two years. Still not necessarily an amazing sleeper. Yeah. And that that was that was tricky. And yeah. and to move in again to and, and then to have you know a team of people and things that we're working on. Yeah, it's a it's a lot More to fit in, right? It's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. It's a lot of time commitment and. Yeah. Um, and it's a real challenge. And you're right. Like I've had those times as well. I'll mm. go, sometimes I'll jump on a podcast, they'll get on the phone to someone and I almost can't talk. Like, yeah, absolutely. You're almost like you've just burnt yourself yeah. into, you know, into oblivion and you're like, well, this is no good. And then yeah. you find a way to reshuffle. I think one thing I've worked on a lot the last few years is is any little hacks and tricks around sort of health and, and wellness and, and doing things to sort of like ease the burden of overwhelm and other things because sometimes it's just a lot going on yeah um but that's uh yeah it's kind of well, we wouldn't change it but i wouldn't change it and, not, I, and i definitely wouldn't easy. change it but you're right like it's not that you weren't trying hard before the kids but you just move into a space Different where you're space, able yeah. to control um you're able to get a lot more um i guess done and organized and oversee it's necessity more things. rather than anything else out of necessity you know? if, if you're a bachelor and you you've got some 70 sleep. hours yeah um yeah, it will take, but we don't have that. You know, no. I mean, you don't I have the be, weekend the same way. You no. don't have the night time. You don't have. I don't have the thought the process. I can't even think. No, I get home and there's Peppa Pig on. <laughs> the other the other night it was over Christmas time. I got home, busy, busy day at work. Got home at seven seven thirty. There was, you know, those like uh, Christmas dolls, the teddy bears that sing carols. So three of those are going on. There was Peppa Pig or something on TV. The girls are screaming. I literally, I'm a chef it's by trade. craft and all I, over the floor. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't even think to cook. Like I, I just couldn't even think. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I, I can't even think to cook and I'm a qualified chef. I just don't even know what I'm doing in here. Yeah. So the, the ability just to have a thought process, I just go, okay, you know, my mum said to me at that time, she said, if you were the, you know, captain of a big organization and the visionary for that, how would you guys be going? I said, we would be stuffed. We'd be fucked. Excuse <laughs> my <Good> language. <laughs> because, because I just can't think, mm. you know what I mean? That time down to go, okay, decompress. What's going on? Where, where's the plan? What's the next step? How do we take this? To-? I was like, so what did you do? Well, I had to get back into health, yep. you know, going to the gym. Not necessarily it's a thought process at the gym, but it's just something else. It's a bit for me that's very social. For me, it it releases all the endorphins. We already know that, um, and it just makes my mind go, oh, okay, I feel better now. Mm. It just it, just something away. Um, traveling definitely helps. Definitely helps. Um, the the downside is my office is about three minutes from my house, so I I need to find another way home. <laughs> Take like 25 minutes Four or five laps yeah. <laughs> Well you could walk yeah I, yeah I could walk But I like my car so <laughs> I like driving You could walk home And then sit in the car In the car yeah, just Turn it on <laughs> Listen to it um, So yeah I mean you, you need to find Different strategies and, and you And you need to Somewhat be a little bit Selfish in that sense of You know I go to the gym Every Saturday morning At 7 o'clock but I miss the sleeping with my kids every Saturday. Mm. But if I don't go to the gym on Saturday, I, you know, that could be sometimes the only day I get to the gym all week because it's been busy. I mean, you know, I'm over in Perth. I was in Townsville the other week, Gold Coast for a whole week. So, so I've been on the road for three out of five weeks, three out of four weeks, no, mm. five weeks. Yeah. So yeah, three out of four, four weeks. That's not normal, but that, that Saturday to me is like, you know, I do miss the sleeping with my kids and that could be the only day I sleep in because Sunday there's tennis and there's swimming and there's like, you know, they're only four years old. So I'm looking forward to when they're teenagers and we've got to go to four different, well, three oh, different places. All the different sports oh. like all afternoon. And- yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
things off the roof racks and did you bring this and where's your football boots and you know like <laughs> your soccer boots so so i'm looking forward to that part but you know you you just got to make sure that your the ebbs and flows in in life and business mm. everyone talks about this life balance life work balance if someone can show me how to get the perfect life balance with everything um yeah it, well, it doesn't exist, right? It doesn't it, exist. It's just being comfortable with your choice yeah. of, of what choices you're making. Yeah. And it definitely helps if you enjoy what you do. Yeah. That's definitely a, yeah. a plus if, you know, if you work 12 hours a day or 10 hours a day now um, and you enjoy it, then your life work balance is great. But there's still times that you need to do extra. Like if your business is suffering and struggling, you're going to need to put in. Mm. Yeah, your life is going to kind of suck for a bit. Like, and you've got to have to put in for the next three or four or five months and then you get it back. It doesn't mean all of a sudden you work for six months and you take two weeks off and go for a holiday. That's that's what people think work-life balance is. And that's where it all wraps together for me because I think we end up having to overwork at times and I think like that's where actually just getting some sales right can can alleviate a lot of the stress oh, of in, in your whole business. And I I might. I'd like to wrap it up yeah. on on this, um, but I, I want to know where you see the future of sales and 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 what really should people be focusing on to make to make life a little easier for them. Whether they've got a team or whether they they're by themselves. Obviously, there's a more autonomous version of marketing that started to mm-hmm. evolve, and mm-hmm. we're using digital marketing and other things heavily. But how does how do I make sales work for me to the extent that I can, I can control my week again. I can yeah. I can get back in in you know in control of of my time and I can have a profitable enough business and not have to be stressed all the time. For me, the answer is just making a bit more on the front end mm. to have more opportunity throughout the whole business to Absolutely. to solve that. What do I do and what does it look like in the future? Well, first of all, if you don't have a documented sales process. You need one. If you don't know how the sales process works in your business, clear. More importantly, if you not only can, can't communicate to that to someone else or you just lead come in, you call them back. If there's no set processes, you need a process. Um, secondary to that is what are your numbers? So I think sales comes down, or I don't think it comes down to three things. Mentality, well, that we need another podcast for that one. Uh, mechanics takes Three weeks to go through mechanics. If you've never done a sale, it'll take, oh, you can go through my program and it takes three weeks, literally three weeks to understand the mechanics of sales. I'm not going to say you're going to be a master at it because it takes 10,000 hours. I think we did that on the first one. Anyway, yeah. we'll move on quickly from that one. And then the metrics. So if you've got leads coming in, how many leads do you need? How many closes or how many purchase orders do you get out of that lead? What's your post sale? And then also, how do we get more leads? Because most people, what, what does every single business look for? Mm. More leads, more leads, more leads, more leads. If you can't close a door, there's no point having a thousand leads come in. I saw someone posted, they're like, oh, we've got 85,000 leads come in though, 24 hours. Now, unless you're a- Is that a real number? That was that was the number that I saw <laughs> on, on online, right? 83,000. <laughs> now, unless you're selling bottles of water, um, 82,000 is too many. Yeah. Like- then not only like what is your sales process and again if it's downloadables different story that's easy um you know but if it's some tangible product you can't deliver a huge, I don't, I don't know anyone Amazon. that can any business that could handle that volume of no, leads and like I said unless it's downloadable yeah right? even that, then yeah only few would be able to cope or have any need for that volume coming through exactly because that wouldn't have come cheap so yes and it's a, and it's a great um, something factor. Uh, it's it's a good number, but it's unsustainable for one. Mm. Um, you're not going to be able to get to all those leads, and if you do, by the time you get the last one, it's you know twenty forty five, right? <laughs> That's a lot of leads. <laughs> That's a lot of leads. I don't think I've seen eighty three thousand leads come through in any business in the whole career, right? No, did they just download census or something? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. if it worked, yeah, if it worked, it'd be so, nice. So I mean, then there the, about eighty thousand left on there. Yeah. <laughs> the I people think that have died haven't called the council. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> but you know, if if you're sitting at home or if you're at work listening to the podcast and you and you think, oh, I don't need anything with my sales process. If you don't have a clear sales process documented Mm -hmm. and you can give that to someone that's never done sales before and they can actually pick up the sales process quickly, i.e. 
one, one a week to nine, 10 days, you need one. Mm. Simple as that. You need one. Even if it's not for you, you need one for everyone else. So I get this document sa- documented sales process out and and what do I use? Like there's apps everywhere, there's systems. Like what, what would you recommend a small business Just use? Just start writing it on a piece of paper. Just write it down. Yeah, everyone's gone digital. I can't, you know, my phone, wherever it is. Um, in the calendar on my phone, I can't see anything. Most of us, if you, if you look at the way we learn visual, auditory, kinesthetic, most – Males are visual kinesthetic, right? Mm-hmm. So we need to do something. So if you're a visual person, and and also in sales coaching and systemic, they they literally will talk at the person, and hopefully they pick up the information. So when the person's actually on the field doing the sales and uh, sales activity, most people can't remember what was heard because there's music in the office and everyone's mm-hmm. laughing, and so so the coaching is actually a little bit wasted. But if it's visual, at least they have a chance of remembering what's going on. If they write it down themselves, it's even better. You mean? And I'm not, you know pictures we were talking before with with someone gave a pitch. Now pictures, some people hate pictures. I prefer pictures, especially with people that don't do sales. But also, what I go through is every line in that pitch. There's a reason for that. So I talk about reaction response results. So every, sing, every single thing that I say in a pitch, there's a reason and a reaction and a result that I'm looking for from that line. Yeah. If I said, you know, let's say, um, you know, residential house, house sales, right? Oh, do you have any kids of yourself, Matt? The reason why I'm asking for kids is not only to build rapport and relationship with the customer, but it's to work out how many bloody rooms you need. Quantifying right? yeah. as well, yeah. So it's the qualifying questions and quantifiable questions that no one's asking because they don't understand the needs of the customer. Or then they're just trying to sell a house, three-bedroom house. Now, you could buy a three-bedroom house. We bought a three-bedroom house and then we had three kids. Now, we need a bigger one, which wasn't <laughs> ideal. But anyway, didn't think that one all the way through and a bigger car. But if someone said to me, you know, me, me and my wife now, how many kids do you have? Oh, we don't have any kids, but we're looking at starting a family. Okay, cool. How many kids are you looking at having? Now, the difference between a studio apartment or a one-bedroom apartment versus a townhouse versus a two-bedroom, uh, sorry, two-story, four-bedroom house is very, very different. Mm. You know, what are your budgets? Now, that's the easy questions. How long have you, how long have you been living here for? Are they type of stable person? Are they new to the area? All those sort of things, if you actually get into the the mindset of what the customer is going to try and purchase it for, sales is easy. Yeah. But most, you know, oh, what would you like on your hair? How many times do you go to a hairdresser, a new one? Oh, what would you like for your hair? And you have no fucking idea. Yeah. What to say? <laughs> um, what's going to look good? Can I have that one out of the magazine? Uh, you're not Brad Pitt. Damn it. <laughs> Your hair's not long enough. Well, I don't know that. I'm out, you know. Yeah. It's like when someone at the, you ask for a drink at the bar and they don't have the drink you want. And you're like, I didn't have a secondary. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, um, damn it. I didn't think of two, right? I just thought of one. So, so by asking the right questions and knowing intelligent questions, you know, uh, working with different businesses around the place and say, you know, do you think this is a good product is a really unintelligent question because mm. what the customer is going to say, actually, it's pretty rubbish because yeah. that's just rude. You know what I mean, do you think this microphone is a great microphone? Yeah. Ah, oh, the customer said yes. Only because it's not natural for a human to say no if they like the person. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And also when you're in rapport with someone, if we're talking about, let's say, motor racing, I love motor racing and someone doesn't like motor racing, it's very unlikely we're going to have a conversation about motor racing, mm. right? But once we start having those sort of conversations, moving it in, building rapport, it's that push-pull method. And language is important, right? Very, as well. like very important. Just, what you've just said there, you've crafted a, crafted a question so it's pretty hard to answer anything other than yes. Yeah. And, and those things are important pieces of the puzzle and, and understanding that and just becoming habitual in, in, in something different than what you might. Because it's just learning small things. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And I, th- I know some people obviously just have it and crack it naturally and, and they're not necessarily you know, focused on, on saying these things, but I guess that's experience too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, it, and like I said, the documentation isn't just your script and, hey, when this customer calls in, then we – send an email, then we send a follow up and on day three we do that. That is important because yep. then you don't miss any people. Yep. How many, you know, especially dealing with the the clients that you deal with, how many thousands of dollars are sitting in their inboxes somewhere? Mm. Like a lot. You know, thousands, thousands of, dollars. of dollars sitting in my inbox. Yeah. You know, in our own, you know, Messenger, Instagram, emails. Oh, what about this? And then and then you don't get back to them. 
It's just yeah. like, oh. Unanswered responses. Yeah. Especially as you start to grow anything, you mm. know, like, for example, an Instagram account or anything else, you, you don't, you, you do miss things. Yeah, absolutely. You, if your inbox is empty, then you're not, you haven't been working hard enough. Yeah, and correct. if your inbox is overflowing, then you're missing you, you stuff. You need to work harder. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to. You, you need to get back to every single person because yeah. you don't know. You know, yeah. people reach out to me randomly and say, oh, what about this and what about that? But if people don't know, you know, like I said, we're we're every business online is a global business. Yeah. I'm not talking about online business. I'm talking traditional businesses that do have a website. You are now a global business. But if you don't understand what that global power is going to look, feel, and be like in the public side, yeah, then 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 you're losing money everywhere. You know, and also without a documented uh, a sales process, you can't work on and without the metrics and knowing how many leads, how many closes, what they do, where they go. Is there a loop back factor? Is there a post sale? Some company and clients will do that. You know, my, my wife is very, very big on this so online stores where she'll put a, fill up her in, um, cart, wait four or five days, yeah. and she gets a 10% discount. Yeah. She knows that. Yeah. She knows, right? the, she knows she, the process. She knows the process. And yep. she waits four more days and she gets a 20% discount. Yep. So she will wait seven days for a 20% discount and she'll buy it then. You know. So, so, you know, you might think, well, the company's. I think that company is losing 20% every time they sell to my wife. You do? Oh, of course. Well, they, yes and no. I mean, they've already invested in that, in getting her that far many times over. And at the end of the day, they, they need to close that sale anyway. Absolutely. Um, so, or you, I a- mean, empty carts, there's, you know, if I'm not in that space, but I'm sure if I go into any business in that space, there is thousands of dollars. In, there's to be thousand dollars in my wife's empty cart. In, in cart anytime there's a cart, right? Yeah, oh, no, that's huge. And then yeah, so there's and there's a lot of online businesses out there that aren't retargeting, you know, yeah. and cart cart abandonment, and yeah. it's um and they're leaving huge amounts of money on the table. And and yeah, you'll say, look, maybe the margin gets dropped down, but they should, and they will still have margin. But they've also invested. In a, in a significant acquisition cost to get them to a point anyway, yeah. and they're much better off closing the transaction, of course, of course, than, um, than letting it go. And you know, but there they, could be a better way. There, there could, could be a, a cheaper way. way. Um, um, but they're 20, keeping twenty percent off a grand, two hundred bucks. Yeah. If you gave my wife uh, something else for fifty hundred dollars, cost to you, yeah. cost you know, um, obviously retail is double that. So if you gave my wife a uh, hundred dollar value, cost you fifty, mm. she'd probably be just as happy with that. Mm. So. Yeah, be, be be creative with those spaces, but just be mindful that you know twenty percent off is, is a lot of margin. You know mm. that that's that's your profit yeah. right there, essentially. And, and this doesn't have to. I mean, building yourself a process and and you know working out a follow up mechanism and and even creating somewhat of a sales script or or some guidelines on the questions and things you need to ask. I mean, it doesn't have to be that difficult, does it? No, it's not. Yeah, you just got to really think about it. Like like I said, spend an hour and just think about what is my customer base. What do they look like? Mm. What would they like to have out of this, you know, a garden store? What are, what are they looking for when they build a, when they, when they come into my, you know, garden center? What are they actually looking to do? Is it herbs? Is it indoor shrubs? Is it little succulents everywhere? You know, what are they looking to actually do in that space? First of all, probably brighten up the area, make it a little, little bit nicer, a bit more homey. Feng Shui, maybe, I'm not sure, probably not, but they're looking to do something out of that space. So if you can actually create that environment in their mind, then they're more likely to buy more products from you. All right, guys, well, you heard it from from the man. Uh, we get your sales process down, even if it's simple, you know, research, reach out to Julian. It, it's out there. I know there's, there's, there's plenty online just to work out, um, you know, just a, just a basic sales process and start to understand you know what is your what is your client what is your customer what are they what are they thinking you know what you know what do you need to say to them to maybe appeal to some of their emotions or other things rather than just selling them uh, the next product that at maybe cheaper than the guy or girl next door so it's not, it's not a race to the bottom it don't race to the bottom and it's uh, you know this, this, the price war thing that we all do well, as soon as we sniff um, some fear in ourselves is race to the bottom and it's not the answer i mean yeah, I, a mate of mine often says about service companies, he's like, he always says to me and a bunch of other people I know, why don't you just double your prices? 
you can afford to lose half your clients. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a difficult one to swallow. What if we'll lose more than half? But, um, but, but it's true. Like, you know, you don't want to race to the bottom. And um, for anyone out there, whether you're a trader, a hairdresser, or whoever, whoever you are, a service company, we're very guilty of the same thing. Just formulate a bit of a sales process. Look, I haven't been amazing at it at, at times, and I'm, I'm happy to say that I've got a reasonable process sort of in play right now, um, one that I want to scale and work on more, but it's it's very noticeable. It's mm. very noticeable in the business, um, maybe not on that day, but as it as it sort of moves in, and you move through three, six, nine months, you see the fluctuations in the activity. And um, when the activity is consistent then um, business is consistently good and when the activities drop for whatever reason because there's another focus or something's happened or whatever then you um you find yourself in in a bit of a challenging spot where you end up doing those late nights and hustling harder and, yeah. and having to get yourself back into place so if now's a good time spend some time on it and um, work out what it might look like to just get a few more people in front of you create a referral system do whatever you need to do to to have a little bit more activity and, and if you need to get a process down, just just do it. Get it on a piece of paper. Write it down, right? I mean, it doesn't it matter. Down. You don't need a fancy apps. You, you don't, don't need Salesforce. It's you a great need... way not to get it done. Yeah, it's a good right. way not to get it done. You'll it's focus on that for a year, It's a great way to waste the hour right? working how the app works. <laughs> <laughs> as, if you, as if you're not technically minded, right? <laughs> that's it. And that's it. But um, yeah, look, thank you so much for coming right. in. Um, I really me. appreciate um, you obviously heading over to Perth this time and, and having a chat in the studio. It's great to have you in here. And uh, and yeah, look, I'm, I'm really focused on, on sales, you know, coming into the next year or two for my client base as well i just feel like people um listening watching that we're having conversations with just need to honor what this is a little more mm. sure there's a name and a word that we don't usually like to associate well, ourselves to customer with, but acquisition. we're all doing it right customer acquisition there you How's go. That? We'll call this episode customer yeah. acquisition. Uh, how to sell. <laughs> but uh, look, it is, it's the same thing. Yeah, um, same thing. And we all do it. We all need it. And we're doing it in relationships or in business or in whatever. What about customer solution strategies? Customer solution strategies. Yeah, that? that's a good way for no one like to that? really know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one wants to talk about sales, right? So let's that's talk true. about customer solution strategies. Yeah. Like it's it. a lot softer, you know. I like it. Oh, I'm not a salesperson. All right. I'm uh, a customer I'll put solution that on my, um, I'll put that on my business card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, brother. Thanks, Thanks so mate. much for coming in. Thanks, And um, look forward to having you on for a number three. Yeah, well, let's see. Same as the number of their kids. So there you go. Good <laughs> Sounds number. good. Cheers. Thanks, mate.